his chance. Hey, chance. It's like, what? <laughs> what? 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 What's going on? Um, he is an American Cocker Spaniel that we do in a pet style. Uh, some people call it a suburban. I don't know. There are lots of other little names for it, but it's a Cocker trim with shorter legs and skirt. So that way he's easier to keep up with at home, but he still looks like a cocker. So he's already been bathed and blow dried and brushed and combed, because I do that first on pretty much everything. And for your for you groomers out there, yes, nice cocker spaniels do exist. You just have to get them from really good breeders like where this guy came from. So bathe and brush and blow dry and then I do all of what we what I consider prep work first which is pads of feet and the little high knee and the PP and some people prefer not to take all the hair out of the pads of their feet that's fine I like to get a lot out of there it gets done every six weeks so it's not a huge deal but some people, when they're showing them, they don't shave the pads of their feet. They just trim off the, around the outside and don't actually go into the pad of the foot. And that's fine, too, as long as you keep the hair short enough so it doesn't um, mat in there. Because it can mat in, in the little creases of the foot pad. It can get a big knot in there. And it, it'll literally, like if it hasn't been done in a while, it'll literally come out in a big hunk when you shave it. So that's what we're trying to prevent with these pet dogs that aren't being shown, is making sure that there's not enough hair in there to get uh, matted. So he still does a little bit of puppy stuff every, one, every now and then for some reason. He just still is kind of like, what is happening? Like I haven't done it before. But like I said, I groom him every six weeks. I'm taking all the hair off the whole bottom of his foot. And that's going to be part of... See, there's a little tangle right there. Hold on. Did you get it? That's just in six weeks there was a little tangle in there. And I just got it cut out. out. Yeah. So that's the reason that I get in the pads of the feet and trim it out on these guys. Now if you know your show dogs are getting big and groomed every week, so they don't they generally don't cut it that short. They just trim right off the bottom of the foot. Now the one thing chance does have is what I call Cocker Spaniel Drop Butt Disease where the minute you touch him and try to move him he tries to go flat so he does do that. Um, he started doing it when he was about six months old and just kind of still does it a little bit so it's just part of what it is. And I'm going to turn him around here in just a second okay. and do around his little private hygiene area there. See? And he's gonna try to go flat. <laughs> See? <laughs> Drop dog. Okay. Just go on the belly right in front of the pee pee. Get all that off because they usually pee on themselves. Just be careful going up here because their little slit is under there. So I always go side to side first and then I just trim it off this way like that. So that way it doesn't get up in the little hole. First thing that I do haircut wise is I do their face because as you can see they grow like tons of hair and it gets right up in their eyeballs. 
And so I'm using a 15 um, on my little Kodos clipper. And now if I was going to show this dog and he had a really nice muzzle, blah, 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 I would probably only use like a 7 or maybe a 10, just depending. Um, but this is a pet dog getting a pet trim. And so I have it set on a 15 blade and I'm knocking this hair off with the grain first because he has really, really thick coat. And basically you shave the whole muzzle. If you're a poodle person or if you've done poodles before, you can pretend it's a poodle. You take the cheek all the way back to the corner of the ear. Like so. Um, some people do this in reverse. You can do it in reverse too. I go in reverse along the lips. And then you have to get your thumb in the lip and pull it back so you can get in the lip glues. And this is generally not their favorite thing. But if you don't get all that out of there, especially in this crease, then some, a lot of times it um, they'll get an infection in there. So you need to get all of that stuff out. And that's probably one of the reasons they started shaving cocker faces is because that that crease holds moisture and hair and if you don't get it out then you're just adding to any skin problems they may have or existing skin problems so don't be afraid to stick your finger in there and pull that whole lip tight so i go forward first real gentle just knocking hair off because that's that's literally how much hair he grows in six weeks. It just there's just tons of it. So that's why I use the 15 on his face or a 10 in reverse, um, whatever you feel comfortable with, because he just grows absolutely tons of hair in six weeks. And they keep they take really good care of him. So um, you know I don't fuss at him to make him do more grooming because they take good care of them and they really just need me to do all that other stuff that they can't do because they bathe them and everything in between. You can see his skin is pretty decent. Yeah, he's beautiful. And we're gonna probably won't be able to see it from this side, but we're gonna yeah, come around. We're gonna stretch around. that lip again. Yeah, let's stretch that lip out see if we can get a, a little bit perfect. And I know that looks terrible, but I'm not hurting him, I promise. If I was, he would tell me. But you've got to stretch all that out and get that hair out of there. And just gently along the top lip. to the throat just like a poodle. Get all that stuff off the bottom. And I've had people tell me, well, these little clippers aren't very strong. Well, I'm telling you, this dog has very, very thick coat and it goes right through like it's nothing. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do his ears. Right. So the rule of thumb when you're doing cocker ears is if you find a little spot where the front of the ear curls back, that's generally a good line placement for where you want to shave too. Um, if you have a dog that doesn't have a lot of ear leather, like he has lots of ear leather, this is his ear all the way down to here. So if you have a dog that doesn't have lots of ear leather, you can adjust that line accordingly. But in his case, it, it falls right where it should. If you go like that, right where that front piece of the ear leather curls over is generally where you want to put your shave line to. 
And you can go just to above that if you're worried that it's too low. Just knock off some hair. Just go down and stop. Down and stop. And then the inside, I always clean that out really short in reverse. Now, you can, when you get to the front of the ear, always check for that little flap where it folds over like we were just talking about. Go out like this to the edge until you figure out where that little flap is and make sure you're not going to cut it. Turn his head this way so I can see. And then over here, there's a flap on the inside sometimes, right there. So if you again go out to the edge like that, so you can see, you can find that flap, then you can come back and clean it up a little bit because you can put your finger on it and hold it. And then you know right where it is. Now, way back when, I was taught to trim the edges of ears with scissors. And I think that's because we didn't have these cool little clippers like we have, or somebody hadn't figured it out yet. Um, the rule of thumb on the back side of the ear is you don't shave below that little flap. Because if you do, if you shave below this little flap, that little piece of skin that sticks out right here, if you shave below that, you take out all of that hair, and then you end up with less of the hair on the bottom. See what I'm saying? Hey, you lose the whole back side of the the shape of the ear. Gotcha. So you go down to that little flap, even if it's a little higher than this line in the front, don't go past that flap. So I shave down to that spot. Now I know where it is. I come up and I go in reverse. Now you don't have to do that. It's just something that I do from showing these guys and uh, wanting to keep the haircut lasting a little bit longer for the pet owner. But you don't have to go in reverse. You can, you can leave it just the way it is as long as you clean up the edge of the ear. And like I was saying, I was taught years ago to do it with the scissors, but now I do it with the clipper because you can take these little tiny blades that we have now and go right along that edge like that. And it looks perfectly straight and beautiful. Just making sure all this stuff is clean on the inside. And all of this nice and clean around the ear hole opening the best that you can because the less hair you have around there, the less moisture it will accumulate around that ear so try to get that as, as short and as tight as you can yeah so from the base of the skull not up into the skull yet we're going to do that when we come from the front from the base of the skull you go down to that flap in the ear like i told you wherever when it, where it folds back right there the very bottom of that is usually a good place to start unless you have a dog with just kind of a little bit wonky ears, you can adjust it, but that's that's your rule of thumb when you're making cocker ears. Go right to there. Stop. Flip the ear over. And clean out the middle stuff so you can kind of see where you're going. Find all these little flaps over here. Go out. Don't go like this, because that's where you're going to catch the uh, very edge of that flap. I've done it before. Go out to the edge. Always go side to side and out to the edge until you get really comfy with what you're doing. Try to get this all in here as clean as you possibly can keep that ear airflow in that ear 
And once you find those little flaps, you can stick your finger on them so they don't flip over and you can clean up more hair. As long as you have your finger on it, you know where you're going. Okay. And now I know where my line is. I'm going to go backwards up to my other line at the base of the skull. So that's nice and tight. You don't have to do that. Um, I do it because we do it on the show dogs like the day or two before and I do it on a lot of my pet dogs that can tolerate it because it lasts longer. Our hair cut in between six weeks and as you can see he grows tons of hair. So years and years ago I was taught to do the edges of ears with scissors and now I do it with clippers because we have these cool little blades and we just go right along the edge and see how fat that uh, ear leather is you're really not going to cut it as long as you just go right along the edge and hold it really tight with your other fingers you can literally make a scissor tight edge on the edge of that ear with the clipper and I actually do this too, but you don't have to. Don't panic over it if you're not comfortable. And then on the back of the ear, we never go below this little flap right here, because if you Excuse cut me? that off, there's a little flap right here on the back edge of the ear. There's skin, you can't see it but you, on a black dog, but you can feel it with your fingers there's a flap right there on the back side of the ear. Don't go below that when you're clippering because if you do, as soon as you slide past that flap, it takes out all of this hair and you lose a lot of the shape of the bottom of your ear. So if you can't figure out why your cocker ears never come out right, it's a lot of times it's because you're shaving below that spot on the back side of the ear. So even if it's a little bit lower then your front side, don't shave that part. You can see it's still there. I shaved all the inside, but I didn't take off the outside on the edge of the flap. Okay, so that blade is not gonna work. That's part of the uh, problem with switching blades that you normally use on another clipper <laughs> is they're seated to that other clipper. Oh. And they make noises. Ah, here's one that's just been sharpened. Let's try that. Okay. So, this is a 10 blade. Um, chances mom and dad like him nice and short. <laughs> and you've probably heard me say that about 10 times already, but he just absolutely, this is literally six weeks of growth. He grows tons of coat. So, um, the uh, American Cocker Spaniel breed standard says they're supposed to have a large eye and a predominant stop, which is this part right here. Maybe it says moderate, but either way, you want to show that their eye is large and that this dips in nice and tight here. So what we do is we take the 10, and we go right over top of the eye and open that eye up and then we take it all the way around in his case over the top of his ear right over the top of the eye and they usually they'll close their eye when you do that see and i'm going to do the other side Go right over top of the eye, about, I don't know, about a quarter of the width of your blade. Right over the top of the eye, down the side, over right to the ear where you clippered already. Looks like maybe they turned some of this when he grew too fast. Okay. And then on these pet guys, since he's getting a 10 on his body, I just follow through all the way around the back skull and leave just the top. 
Again, this is a pet trim, guys. So, we're taking a 10 on his body. I'm just following that through since that's what we already have. Not curving down the side yet. Just taking off the whole top of his back with a ten. You can do a seven. I prefer a five because I've shown these guys and I like them to have a little more texture on their back. But you can do anything from a two comb or a four or a five uh, to a ten. I've had people in the past have me do fifteens. I won't really do a 30 because it just looks naked to me and I'm not really thrilled about that, but I've done everything up to a 15 blade on their back. If, the client, if that's what the client wants, that's what the client gets. But for a pet person doing their own dog, usually a 10 is the shortest you want to go. You can see this is nice and short and it'll last a while. stand up because we can't do the rest of it with him lay down stand Mr. Up, lazy butt Mr. drop butt cocker spaniel okay all right up we go buddy uh, there we go hey, buddy he's like oh geez again do I have to yes you have to baby I get in here there we go as you can see, he has the usual cocker lay down drop butt syndrome, which is just kind of typical of this breed for some reason. They always like to hang their heads and try to lay down during grooming. I'm not sure what that exactly is about, but a lot of them do it. Okay, so now we've done his whole neck and everything. We're going to start curving around the edge of his body and drop and straight off. Now, when you're doing a show dog, you're not clippering number one, but when you're doing a show dog, this stays up here. Way up at the top. There's no line. We don't go right like that. It all falls off the dog. So if you're trying to get a show pattern and you're clippering, you would leave it up higher. But this is a pet dog, and they don't want all that hair to brush, and they don't want this to grow and stick out nine miles in between the grooming. They just wanted to look cute like a cocker. So I modify that and I actually bring it down and drop right off the edge of the rib cage towards the bottom. So we still have the semblance of a skirt and we still look kind of like a cocker spaniel. But it's all blended. And it falls right off the side. And they got really thick coats, so sometimes you have to do it two or three times in order to get all the hair off and get it all blended in. See the action of my wrist when I get to that part? Like this. Let me slide to the side. We've got a whole other side we can do too, okay. so it's not a big deal. Just drop it and pull it back towards yourself. That's how you get that blend, even with a 10 blade. Drop and pull it back towards yourself. Push and push. I call it falling off the mountain. Okay. 
All right, now we can do the other side and we can do the tail. So we call this falling off the mountain. Falling off the what? Well, I call it falling off the mountain. Oh. This is a 10 blade and you can get it tidy even with the 10 blade it doesn't have to have a line. It's not supposed to be a distinct line right here. It's supposed to blend and look like it grew that direction. So if you're trying to get more of a show dog pattern you blend off up here at the top of the rib cage where the ribs start to fall off. This is where you want it to be. Now these guys they don't want all that hair. They prefer less hair to deal with because they do a lot of maintenance at home. So I lower it down for them and I drop right off where the rib cage starts to curve. Curve up under? Yeah. There. Follow it through all the way back. Don't go up over the hip over here. Follow that line all the way through, right across the thigh. So you're stretching that skin out. Yeah. With the other hand. I have to. Let me get all of that. I was trying not to a minute ago because I wanted you guys to see the action of how I was doing it. So you get that nice blend. That's a 10 blade. You can get a blend with a 10. You just have to flip your clippers off. Like so. And I take off the whole chest and everything. Okay. Then we shave the whole tail. You go side to side on the back if you want. Like this, if you're worried about it. Just curve right around the edge of the tail. You can scoot your fingers up and feel where the end of the tail is. Use your other hand to help guide you so you know where you're going. Now, if you have a cocker spaniel with a long tail, you have a choice. You can shave the whole entire tail, or you can shave part of the tail, leave a little flag on the end. If it's a pet dog, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, but when you're showing these guys in the U.S., their tails are docked, and we shave the whole tail. There are other countries that aren't docking the tails? Most other countries do not dock tails, so they'll have a long tail and sometimes it even curls. And they still shave the whole tail. But if you've got a pet dog and you don't like that, you can turn it into a golden retriever tail for all I care. But for our purposes of what we do with dock tails is we trim them, shave the whole tail. Just like with a schnauzer or anything like that. I'm just cleaning up any little extra bumpy stuff that I see that I missed because I was trying to. That's the other thing when you're grooming. When you, you look from different angles, <laughs> you'll see different things. Don't just look at the dog from one side or from one angle because you'll find other stuff when you're looking at them from a different angle.